Hi there and welcome back. Some of you might have watched my time-lapse video assembly of this well-run Vertex or K8400. This time I'd like to show how to fit a plexiglass door on the Vertex printer. It's done by printing and by crafting a 4mm plexiglass sheet. Now I understand that most of you are printers and not cutters. But you can't really print a fully transparent door with a fused filament printer. And if you could, the Vertex print volume would still be too small. So before I assemble my printer, I took the front panel and put it on a sheet of plexiglass. I then used a whiteboard pen to copy the opening. The whiteboard pen marks should easily be white off the front panel, front panel edges afterwards, but test on a hidden surface first to make sure that you're not using a permanent pen, pen by mistake. If your printer is already assembled, then instead pre-cut a smaller piece of plexiglass that allows you to hold it against the front panel and draw from the back. The white board pen strokes may also be white of the plexiglass protection foil, so put some blue tape on it first. The white board pen will wipe off the front panel, but be permanent on the tape. You could also copy the top opening while you're at it, but don't cut that one out just yet. So you have to make this one slightly bigger than the opening. It's meant as a dust cover. I'm not designed with all parts of this design yet, but I will return to it in a later clip. Once you copy the opening, it's time for you to show off your crafting skills. I used my jigsaw, and any jigsaw should do, as long as it lets you control the speed, and preferably turn off the pendulum action. The pendulum action is the saw blade movement forward and backwards in the cutting direction. With this turned off, the X4 will cut slower but more precise. The speed should be set to a minimum, otherwise the blade will run hot and start to melt the plexiglass. For this reason, also use a curved blade, which is a blade that cuts wider than the blade itself. Most blades do, but some doesn't, like this one. Now, just put on all the safety gear that you can think of and get as far away from pets and children as possible, which put me out in the snow. Don't let the saw blade cut outside the painted line. You need to cut the hatch smaller than the opening for obvious reason as it's a flush design. As you might imagine, the jigsaw doesn't leave a surface this smooth. You need a file and some patience to get close. And last, you need the secret ingredients, which is a high quality polishing paste. It says chrome on the can, but this one will work just as well on acrylic glass. Now, won't this scratch the surface, you might ask? No, not really. But any paper towel will. Paper may feel soft as silk, but still scratch. Use an old cotton t-shirt for polishing, and a microfiber cloth for a final cleaning. And to be safe, try to polish only the edges. I have actually used this one on turntable lids, plastic turntable lids, and make them look like new, so this is more than okay. When you come this far, it's finally time to start printing. I've used the standard settings of the Vertex and the 40% infill. For the best fit, I recommend using a print layer height that sums up to even millimeters throughout the print. O2 at the first layer, followed by O2 or O1 is ok. O25 followed by O125 or O125 is also ok. O13 for the first layer is not ok, regardless of what layer height that follows. You'll need to print the hinges, one of these, two of those, a magnet lock and a couple of clips to hold the things in place while you fit the door. I have uploaded the STL files to Fingerverse, look at the description or on the subtitles. Note that all of these parts has to be scaled to one tenth of their size. They are made in SketchUp and there are some issues why. Also note that these clips need to be scaled to fit the gap between your hatch 
and the front panel. The scaling should be in the x axis of your print. This is the measurement I'm talking about. Um, printed with standard settings, my clips measure about 1 mm. Simply put the hatch in, measure the total gap, and divide it by 2. When everything is printed, start by removing these two screws and use them and the nuts to assemble the hinges. Don't tighten too hard, they should move freely but not be too loose. To fit the hinges on the front panel you need 15mm hexagon socket M5 screws or longer. I used 16mm as I wanted to add a pair of washers. With this done, put in the mounting clips, number of choice. and position the hatch carefully, so that you have a gap evenly around it. Next, put some blue tape on the hatch by the hinges. The main reason for this is that the drill shavings may otherwise spin and scratch the, the glass. Now fold the hinges towards the plexiglass door, mark with a filled pen tip as accurate as possible, remove the hatch and drill. Use a sharp 5 or 5.5 mm drill. Only push very gently, it's easy to crack this plastic, especially towards the end of the hole. Drill slowly or the plastic will melt. If the drill doesn't seem to cut, check the tip for melted plastic. With all four holes drilled, remove the mounting clips. And use four 12mm M5 screws and locking nuts to fit the hatch to the hinges. Adjust them so that the door hangs just where you want it. Make sure that it can open and close without any parts grinding against each other. Next, open the hatch to position the magnet lock. I say magnet lock since you're supposed to fit two 10mm in diameter and 2mm thick Neodymium magnets in the small slots. Make sure that you insert the magnets so that they are cracked. They snap in place and can't easily be removed afterwards. If you want a completely silent operation, then put some non aggressive glue in the slots first, like PVA. Otherwise, there may be a slight clicking sound when closing the latch. Do not break the two pieces apart yet. They will be separated later on. First cover the display PCBs so that they don't get drill shavings on them. Use some ESD safe bubble wrap and some blue tape. Now, centered inside of the front pa panel are two circular marks, one here and one behind here. Use this as a guide to position the lock in this direction and make sure that this edge is in flush with this edge. It's a curved surface. As before, put on some blue tape, mark with a felt in pen and drill. Use a sharp 3 or 3.5 mm drill. Remember to push very gently. You do not want to crack your front panel. Also, drill slowly or the plastic will melt and stick on the drill top. When done drilling, close the hatch and put some blue tape on it. Fasten and position the lock using the two holes that you have already drilled. Do this carefully. This lock uses a total of ten, oh, sorry, a total of four 10 mm M3 flat head screws with locking nuts. So mark the two remaining holes, 
remove the lock and hatch, the lock and hatch, and drill gently. At this point, cut the two pieces apart and file the surfaces smooth. We use a smaller file if you want. Refit the lock for the final time and you're done. You might wonder why I made this design so complicated with a hatch in flush and uh, with a front panel instead of overlapping and with a non-contact magnet lock. It's because the printer vibrates a lot, especially during infill, and an overlapping door could rattle against the front panel, making all kinds of noise. The hinges will stop the door from going too far in, so that's not a problem. And the magnet lock will position it, position it very nicely. I hope that you like this design. Thanks for watching and please leave a comment. comment. Constructive criticism is most welcome and praise well, I guess, if you insist. Bye for now and please tune in later. Thank you.